up on today's Airborne, is there another baker in AOPA's future? Rockwell Collins buys Air Rink, and Gamma publishes the second quarter 2013 sales numbers. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. There is growing evidence that AOPA's next boss could be a relatively unknown flyer by the name of Mark Baker. Baker's name is being circulated by several very reliable sources as being on the short list for the position of President and CEO of AOPA. Baker was President and COO of Scott's miracle Grow from September 2008 to October of 2010 before taking over as President and COO of Orchard Supply Hardware LLC. His connection to aviation is not particularly evident, and he was only mentioned in a 2010 EAA news release when Scotts entered into a partnership with EAA to maintain the grass runway in the Warbirds area at Whitman Regional. The release nearly mentions that Baker is a pilot. Another news report noted that he uses a Cessna caravan to visit the 91 orchard stores around California and Oregon. AOPA said that it would not comment on rumors and that no offer or contract has been extended to any candidate to replace Craig Fuller. Rockwell Collins has announced that it has reached a definitive agreement to acquire Air Inc. Incorporated for $1.39 billion. The transaction will bring together, quote, two leading players in the growing field of aviation information management, combining Air Inc.'s trusted networks and services with the industry-leading avionics and cabin technologies developed by Rockwell Collins, end quote. Air Rink broadly touches the entire aviation ecosystem, as well as providing communications and information processing for the rail, industrial security, and public safety segments. Their 2013 revenues are expected to be in excess of $600 million. When completed, the acquisition will shift the balance of Rockwell Collins business to approximately 54% commercial and 46% government. The transaction is expected to close upon receipt of regulatory approvals. Well, we survived Oshkosh 2013, as all five weekday episodes of Airborne can easily attest. EAA Chairman Jack Pelton said that AirVenture 2013 was an unqualified success, with about a half million people on the ground over the course of the week. More than 10,000 aircraft arrived at Whitman Regional Airport in Oshkosh, as well as other airports in east-central Wisconsin. The official attendance figures from EAA indicate that the show was very comparable to 2012, with more than 500,000 people flying in or coming through the turnstiles. Pelton said that attractions such as Jetman, the Terra Fugia flying car, as well as the screening of Disney's planes were the most visible draws this year. Adding, quote, We overcame some big challenges this year, including a lack of current military aircraft participation to produce an outstanding event, end quote. Meanwhile, the EAA chair is already looking ahead to 2014, noting that there are some big aviation anniversaries next year, including the 100th anniversary of the start of World War I and the 75th anniversary of the jet engine. Gamma has released the industry's airplane shipment and billing figures for the second quarter, and the numbers still show an industry with challenges to overcome. Tom Patton reports. Challenges, yes, Ashley, but there was some very good news in the report. In the first half of 2013, total worldwide general aviation airplane shipments rose 8.9% over last year, from 931 shipments to 1,014. Billings for GA airplanes worldwide reached $10.4 billion, up 26.4% from the same period last year, when they totaled $8.2 billion. This marks the first time since 2008 that airplane revenues have exceeded $10 billion in the first six months of the year. Single and twin-engine turboprop shipments continued their positive trajectory, increasing 3.8% and 70.6% respectively this year. Piston engine airplanes also increased to 455 units in the first six months, an increase of 16.1% compared to 2012. 
However, business jet shipments were down 4.1% over the same period last year. Gamma President and CEO Pete Bunce called the numbers encouraging, but added that the difference in performance among sectors shows that manufacturers still face some strong headwinds as the global economy recovers. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. President Obama has nominated Deborah A.P. Hirschman to serve a third term as the chair of the NTSB. The appointment came just two days before her term was set to expire. Hirschman has been chair of the board since July of 2009. Her appointment must be confirmed by the U.S. Senate, which is currently on its August recess. Obama also appointed Hirschman as acting vice president, a position which does not require Senate confirmation. That order will allow Hirschman to continue to lead the board until her appointment is made official by the Senate. Christopher Hart, who had been vice chairman under Hirschman, was also renominated on Thursday to remain on the board. The Hill reports that the appointment as chair is for a two-year term, but she was also tapped to serve another five-year term as a member of the NTSB. You're watching Airborne. More in a moment. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds and learning proper crosswind landing techniques. Even today, most crosswind landing skills are learned through trial and error, sometimes with disastrous results. Believe it or not, the most common contributing factor in weather-related accidents each year is crosswinds. The second most common factor is wind gusts. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. It teaches pilots the proper techniques to meet and beat these top two causes of weather-related landing accidents. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in challenging crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird X-Wind SE, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop us an email to news spy at aero news.net. The sixth significant release of ForeFlight Mobile this year is now available for download from the App Store. ForeFlight Mobile 5.3 will allow users to view plate and taxi diagram map overlays on any of ForeFlight's own. 13,000 plus georeferenced diagrams and 700 plus georeferenced airport diagrams on the moving map. The plates on a map and taxi diagrams on a map pro feature is one of the many products emerging from ForeFlight's semi annual Hack Week held in Austin earlier this summer. With this feature, users can display any georeferenced approach plate or taxi diagram right on the map. The update also includes flight alerts. When filing IFR through ForeFlight, users will be updated when their expected route clearance is available. It can then be viewed directly on the moving map or see your flight track on FlightAware after landing. A new aerial map layer, an enhanced instrument panel that shows eight instruments, and an improved design. In addition to these new benefits, a plate transparency slider is available that when adjusted lets you see through to the underlying sectional chart, terrain, or aerial map. The NTSB has received an unspecified number of complaints about attorney solicitations arising from the July 6th Asiana crash in San Francisco that left three dead and 180 others injured. At issue is the 1986 law that prohibits attorneys from soliciting air crash victims and their families for a period of 45 days following the accident. So far, the NTSB has reported just one firm, Chicago-based Ribic Law Chartered. Specifically, the NTSB is examining the actions of the firm's Shanghai-based attorney, William Wang, who used China's version of Twitter to discuss the Asiana crash. On July 11th, just five days after the crash, Wang posted, quote, Entrusted by American lawyers, I request the Asiana Airlines crash families contact me, end quote. Wang later posted another message explaining that, quote, 
lawyers in Chicago who specialize in air crashes, end quote, would be visiting Asiana passengers and their families at a hotel near the San Francisco airport. Ribbick attorney Monica Kelly says that the firm has done nothing wrong, noting in an email, quote, we were invited by Chinese government officials in China and the United States, including their local diplomats, to meet their Chinese nationals to represent them." End quote. The NTSB offered no comment on Wang's statements. An attorney representing several families that live in the San Francisco Bay Area has filed four separate lawsuits claiming Boeing should have retrofitted its 777 airplanes with low airspeed warnings following a 2009 accident similar to the one involving Asiana Flight 214. The suits have been filed on behalf of 12 passengers who were aboard the airplane. They are the first to implicate Boeing, who has been providing training to Asiana pilots since 2006. The suit does not specifically say whether Boeing trained the pilots operating Flight 214. Attorney Frank Pitre cited a 2009 accident involving a Turkish Airlines 737-800 landing in Amsterdam that occurred under very similar circumstances to the Asiana flight. Following that accident, Boeing added voice command low airspeed warnings to 400737s in accordance with a recommendation from the Dutch Safety Board. Pitre says that the 777 should have been similarly updated, which he says is a software upgrade. The lawsuit also names the flight crew for not getting the passengers evacuated from the airplane in the 90 seconds required by the FAA. The suits do not ask for a specific amount of damages. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers thought was especially entertaining. We call it ABW, the Aero Video of the Week. Have you ever wondered what it takes to capture those magnificent aerial views seen in promotional videos every manufacturer releases to promote a new aircraft? Well, if so, this ABW will ease your mind, as it provides a behind-the-scenes look at just such a photo shoot for the Falcon 2000 LXS. Find it on YouTube by searching Air to Air Behind the Scenes. The first Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner rolled out of the paint hangar recently, and it was wearing the new Boeing commercial airplane's livery. The new livery retains many of the features of the original 787-8 livery, adding a prominent number on the tail to help distinguish among models within the same product family. This refreshed look for the Boeing family began with the 747-8 and evolved further with the 737 MAX. The 787-9 will complement and extend the 787 family, offering airlines the ability to grow routes opened with the 787-8. With the fuselage stretched by 20 feet, the 787-9 will carry 40 more passengers an additional 300 nautical miles, with 20% less fuel use and 20% fewer emissions than similarly sized airplanes. Boeing is on track to roll out and fly the 787-9 currently in final production in late summer. The first delivery to launch customer Air New Zealand is set for mid-2014. Well, that's our program. Remember, you can get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. And please remember, Airborne is streamed twice weekly and is always online. Join us again this Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.